What up, Huck Squad? Coming at you with a three minute Thursday that is going to be more geared towards the filmmaking aspect of the vlog than the disc golf aspect of the vlog. And today's episode is going to be revolving around the Peter McKinnon variable ND filter, which looks just like this. And this is the six to nine one. Essentially what a variable uh, ND filter or neutral density filter does for you is it allows you to film in manual mode and have full control over all your settings. Um, so for the longest time now, I was just filming in auto and auto means auto exposure. So whenever you're out filming, the exposure bracket is just gonna keep moving up and down. Uh, the camera is gonna try to do all the work for you to expose correctly. So having the variable ND filter allows you to film in manual mode so that you can set all of your settings exactly how you want them. So for anyone who's not familiar with filmmaking, this could sound a little bit confusing to you guys, um, but in general, when you're doing filmmaking or video work, you want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate. So if you're filming in 24 frames per second, you want your shutter speed to be 50. If you're filming in 60 frames a second, you want your shutter speed to be one over 120. If you're filming slow motion, 120 frames a second, you want your uh, shutter speed to be one over 250. So you really want your shutter speed to be double your frame rate, but when you're filming in automatic, when you're out in bright sunlight like I am today, it's really hard to film in manual because I'm going to give you a little example in a second, but when you set all your settings to what you want them to be and then you're out in a bright sunlight day like today, the whole screen looks way overexposed. So having that neutral density filter is essentially like putting uh, sunglasses or like a shade on your lens to allow you to be able to film in those correct uh, settings that you want to film in filmmaking. So I'm going to give you a couple examples. I'm going to walk through holes one, two, and three here at Maple Hill, go into some shadows, go into some light, and just give you some examples of what I mean by that. Um, and hopefully it opens your eyes to a little bit more of the filmmaking aspect that goes behind the scenes here. Let me give you some examples of what I mean. All right, so here's the first example, and I am perfectly exposed at my settings being 1 over 50 for a shutter speed, f-stop of 5.6, ISO of 200, and my ND filter is on the five stop. So as you can see, everything looks good right now. Everything looks nice and crisp. Everything looks clear. Now, if I only take the, the filter, the ND filter, and I spin it to go to the two, you can already see how much more overexposed that is just by moving it from the fifth stop to the two stop of the ND filter. Now, let me show you what it looks like if I completely take the filter off and still keep the same settings. All right, so you can see now without anything on the front of the camera, if I'm in 1 over 50, f5.6, 200 ISO, without any filter on, you can see how ridiculously overexposed and bright everything is in this shot here. And that's even with me being in f5.6. If I drop my f-stop all the way to f3.5, which is the most that this camera can do, you literally cannot see a single thing. So let me pop this filter back on, kind of act like a little sunshade. You can already see that's a little bit better. I'll take the stops and put this back to five stop. So now that's still almost perfect. It is a little bit overexposed. And so what I would need to do in this case is drop my ISO from 200 to 100, which is the lowest that I could possibly go. And now I am perfectly exposed. So that's at F3.5 instead of F5.6, which is what I did at the beginning. But instead of being at F5.6 and 200 ISO, I'm now at F3.5 and 100 ISO. So like I said, if you're not into filmmaking or if you really don't understand anything about what I'm talking about right now, I'm very sorry, but it's giving good examples to anyone who is into filmmaking and wants to see kind of how an ND filter would affect you in bright sunlight out here. All right, so you can see even in the bright sunlight, I can pretty much even look directly at the sun and the sky is blue, you can see the sun, everything is still really well exposed. There is no chance you would be able to look at the sun without having an ND filter on or else everything would go crazy. So just an example of that, out here in bright sunlight, one over 50, F5.6, 200 ISO, and everything looks great. So let me show you what happens if we shanked our shot into the woods. As you can see, it is quite dark in here, but out there is still pretty well exposed. So if I landed in here on like a shank shot and I needed to film someone in here, the only thing I would really have to do, I guess I have two different options. I can spin the lens cap so that it's on the two stop instead of the five. That does expose it a little bit better and that's not too bad. Um, or what I could do is I'm gonna pop this back to five and then much, uh, not much more easily, but a little bit more easily. All I have to do is raise the ISO from maybe 250 to, I don't know, 1600 
And that's a little bit of a quicker solution. So now if someone was right there, I'd easily be able to film them, follow their flight, and it still looks pretty well exposed out there. It is a little bit bright, but you can't get everything perfect, especially when you're filming from shade and filming into bright light. So it can get a little bit tricky, but it's gonna take me a little while to learn how to do all this, but today was a huge learning moment for me. And it's been pretty fun, honestly, to learn all these little settings and really be filming in manual instead of just letting the camera do its own thing. All right, so I just got out of the woods and I didn't change anything about the settings. So we're still at 1 over 50, f5.6, ISO of 1600. All I'm going to do is turn the front of the lens to 5, and that definitely helped a little bit. We are in bright sunlight, so I'm still at 1600 ISO. I'm going to continue to drop this all the way to about 320, which is what I'm at right now, and we are perfectly exposed. So as you can see, Using a variable ND filter to control exposure is definitely helpful, but it can be very tricky at first and honestly quite confusing. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of clarity on how it can help when you're filming out here in bright sunlight and how it can change uh, when you walk like from shade to light, uh, whether or not you want to change the filter or whether or not you want to bump your ISO. You have a couple different options. All right, guys, that's going to wrap things up on my little description of the variable ND filter by Polar Pro. I couldn't be more happy to start finally dialing in like my filmmaking and figuring out how to do all these manual exposures and really figuring all this stuff out. It's really going to make a big difference on the channel once I'm able to dial all this in and just do everything I just talked about naturally without even really thinking about it. So hope you enjoyed, hope you found some value in this, hope I didn't confuse you too much, but remember to eat your vegetables and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.